And so you started to see me as a client February of 2023. So it's been just over a year. Yeah. Yeah. So start there. I was quite ill, uh, I'd say, just to put a number on it, for about a good nine months uh, prior to, to our meeting. Um, I just, uh, you know, I've always been a high active guy. I'm a residential carpet installer, which takes a great deal of physical, uh, you know, ability and never really had many trouble besides a few injuries here and there, but I just started to lose my energy. Uh, I'd have days where just all day long, just body aches weakness now at the same time i had already been because i was looking after someone in, in the family so i was learning uh quite a bit about different things uh you know medicine and symptoms and medications and whatnot by the time i got to you i had uh my blood pressure was 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 high i started tracking my blood pressure when i started looking after my family member and as i started to kind of feel bad if you're on one day i'll check it and, you know it right i noticed it it was it was starting to get high and it never got dangerously high like i hear on the internet but for me it was high because i was always just pegged um and you said that you had a like an apple watch on in the middle yeah. of the night, it would start vibrating and wake you up and ask if I, I had my you. Apple Watch, and this was uh, this was coming up not too long before I, you know, ended up contacting you. Um, yeah, I wore I wore my Apple Watch, and I noticed it going off, and I look at it in this SOS emergency. I forget exactly how the how it was set up or how it set it, but it was you know, had the little heart thing, you know, and it was basically, do you want me to call 911? And I'm thinking, oh, no. <laughs> they happened a couple of times, like just in my regular, well, it woke me up out of my sleep. I wake up and it's, bam, 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 and I'm thinking, well, that's enough of this thing. You know, <laughs> I haven't put it on since. But all, all sorts of other symptoms, I don't know if related or not, but uh, anxiety, like just feeling like there's a bomb going to go off behind me at any minute now. And I'm just prepared for it. I roll some of them down because I'm not very good on the spot. Yeah, go ahead. Low energy, uh, high blood pressure, anxiety, depression, uh, frequent urination, extreme fatigue. There was especially, it, it started off when it, it got worse. By the time I met you, it was uh, one or two days a week. I'd wake up in the morning and my first thought is, how do I feel today? Because if I'd wake up with body aches and I never would check my, my temperature, but just, just drain, I got nothing. And I always figured it was dehydration. I was, if you ask my wife, it was, I was always dehydrated. So it was more um, Pedialyte, bananas, you know, that sort of thing, which you have. also in my ribs, my, it would be my left side. About right here, there was a spot on the rib that actually hurt. It didn't feel like it was inside my heart, but I call it my rib pain. So I had my rib pain. I had a spot in my lung, which which I I didn't tell anyone about. I was a heavy uh, heavy smoker for thirty years. I I I, I quit uh, two years ago or so, but uh, I so I figured it was probably something to do with that. It was something I was always worried about. I never even told my wife about it. My first visit in your office, though, you're you're testing me. You're like this, and you said, "Oh yeah, you got this," and you pointed right to it. You're like, and it's right there too. And I was blown away. I'm like, wow, I never told anyone. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't in part in part of the little you know or the the survey or nothing. You just you went to that, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> so. And then I would sweat it, it overnight. I would, at the time, I weighed roughly in between 130, 135. I would go to bed roughly 135. I would wake up 130. I mean, I'd wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. I come back and like the bed is, so I'm like setting another sheet down, you know, and I'm, I'm yeah. just soaking wet. That's your immune system trying to create a fever for oh, getting rid of organisms. That was for quite some time that was for months this one would sweat but i swear i couldn't sweat out of this armpit but i would shower and i'd get out of the shower and i mean like i couldn't wash the bo off yeah literally i also had a a a, a pain that would come and go in my lower abdomen 
that was just kind of on top of everything else. It was like, that wasn't really one of my concerns. Cause I mean, I, I literally was worried I was dying. I had a neck injury, which landed me in the hospital with symptoms uh, similar to a heart attack. So they kept me overnight for observation just to make sure that it wasn't, you know, so they hooked me up uh, EKG and all that. And they came in the room sometime in the middle of the night to take me downstairs to prep me or, and I, I, you know, for what? And they said, well, we, they, you had two changes in your EKG. I still don't know. Now, again, before we start any of this, I'm a carpet installer. I have no education in the medical field. I, 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 I watch everything, you know, that, that you put out and I, and I, I do study, but I know nothing. So I still not sure what that meant, but it seemed pretty sure to her, but I was, I, at this time I had been in so much pain for, for two, I haven't slept. I'm not going in, you know, if you think you're going to put stints or something, I'm in no, I'll come back. You know, I don't know what, so I declined them. I told them, no, no. Um, we argued back and forth. I, I threatened to leave. She said, no, no, don't leave. And I says, well, I'll stay here till the morning, but I'm not going, we're not doing any of that. She ended up telling me to, uh, well, when you're done throwing your fit to uh, make sure I get my heart disease looked at or so, she implied that I had heart disease. So now it's like, you know, I had some of my, you know, I got heart disease. Uh, right. So you had heart symptoms and they save lives when they do surgeries or whatever they were going to do. Yeah. You're not used to somebody leaving and actually getting fixed naturally, you know? Yeah. When, well, so when was that in relationship to first coming to see me? Like how many months before you saw me? Well, I had actually had two episodes that I thought were, it may have been mild heart attacks, but I've never, you know, sorry about the shaking. Yeah. So I suffered two pretty scary situations before it happened. And when she said there was two changes, I kind of thought, well, I wonder if maybe it's, I saw you about eight months later. Okay. And you didn't tell me any of this stuff when you first came in. And I didn't realize that you had such severe heart symptoms until a few visits into the program with me. Like, like you started to admit like, oh, my heart feels better. And I'm like, wait, what? I didn't, really, I didn't realize you had heart pain or I didn't know you had high, you know, you had a history of high blood pressure, all that stuff. So you kind of kept that from me even. Yeah, I was... when we first started talking, you were talking about being a carpet installer and uh, I found parasites initially. Yeah, yeah. And you said, yeah. well, yeah, so like since you age, age of 13, you, you've been laying carpet, but you got to rip up the old carpet, which is always filled with cat pee and oh, yeah. dog poop and dog pee and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I made my career in cat. Yeah. Pee. So, that, <laughs> so those things those things destroy your body and you get symptoms and it it's harmful for every organ. And so it's not just like heart, it's not heart disease, right? It's, it's a bigger picture. I, I later found out, you know, to go get a calcium, you know, artery score. And I turned out, yeah, I literally almost no placking in my arteries. Uh, what I figured it out, you know, you know, what I figured was just, between parasites, you told me that I had, you know, a lot of toxins, um, not, you know, specific, you have this or this, but probably from the parasites or something like unlucky exposure or, you know, maybe a glue that I've worked with for 30 years, you know, you never know. It, I, what I just figured is my body just became overwhelmed. And, you know, I mean, my liver probably couldn't keep up my kidneys and my lymph nodes not to skip this far forward but really i mean one of my, my only symptoms is still a little bit of tenderness now and again under that armpit but i i sweat good i clean up good <laughs> you're yeah, well I, 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 I sweat well you know i clean up well yeah. i don't deal with that that went away um you know within a few months of yeah. eating better and and you know and and, and the supplements for sure so how long did you get parasites coming out of you? I keep track when the full moon is, and then I, I bulldoze a pair of this and whatever. I got you know. more supplements. Yeah. I don't take all of them, but I'll pick one and just heavy on it, you know. Yeah. Not always something happens, you know, but uh, 
Well, that particular over the, the eclipse, I didn't, it didn't even dawn on me. I didn't take anything. You know, I didn't, I didn't do any type of, you know, any parasite cleanse or anything. It was the next day or maybe the day after at the latest I got out. Boy. I have, I have pictures, which I, I, I can, I, I'll be willing to send you. And I don't yeah. care if you, you yeah, know, I don't yeah. care if you use them. We could put captions on. Um, in fact, I wrote down a couple, uh, I have some stories about parasites. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I'm done. My days of fishing, I'm out of the toilet and taking pictures and stuff is done. So it's been but, about uh, a year. But you're getting, yeah, of, of getting them out. And I tell you the last, what about four days ago? I, I think I still got some out. So, so I mean, I, so I, so I, I'm, I don't think I'm done. Now, I, I think that what I've, what I've been through, I, I, I think I've made a lot of progress. I know, and again, I don't know if they are, you know, parasites. I didn't take anything to a lab and say, hey, what's this? But I mean, I had one on my face here that would come about every three weeks for years. It would show up and it would, it would swell up and it would, and I'd try to fight the urge. I don't want to squeeze it because it would get angry. I'd squeeze it and then it would double in size and it would never come to a head and pop, but then it would just go away. No scar, no nothing like it. That was normal for years, um, at least five, 10 years. Well, then when I started seeing you and I'm taking this and I'm taking that, it came back and I just got the bright idea for some reason to take a pair of three, put a couple drops on my finger and rub it on there. And I did that for two days. I woke up the next morning and it had a head on it. So I squoze it and it popped. I actually, like, you could hear it like, Poof. so I look and it was like a solid little, and I took it and I put it like on the counter and I'll send you the pictures. It's the, there's a red bloody one. I'll put the one, this is out of my nose. Um, so now I don't know if it's a parasite or if that's just summer, if it was just a zit, just waiting to pop, but it hasn't been back since. Yeah. No scar, no nothing. It went away. Literally now that was out. months ago. That was months ago. I wouldn't have went more than, I wouldn't have went two months without this thing showing itself waving <laughs> yeah. i mean i remember at work you know i know it was a couple of times i put them little round band-aids over it because i just yeah. got this thing on my face yeah. you know? hey, i want you to but, talk about um the teeth issue being a smoker i contribute that to because I, I lost a lot of teeth it, it, for a while there towards the end of my 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 smoking uh career <laughs> yeah. uh seems like i was losing one a year um so i went in and i had i have uh you know, several missing, and I have several that have been repaired as well. Going back five, six years, I had a really bad tooth infection. That I think had, it took me 10 years, and you had that cyst on your butt that would come and go. Yeah, I was wondering if there was a connection between this and that. But now, back to the parasite story, because I've gotten there, and this and that. and But the worst uh, dump of parasites that I had I think it's the one that, that caught your attention in the office when I told you one night that I got out a 12 inch and a six inch and God knows what else was in there, but I saw it and I flushed them out. That's why, like I said, I'm done playing with, <laughs> so you won't be getting any new pictures or anything um, unless there's like an alligator. Or something. <laughs> I, once I got those out, that went away and that pain in my abdomen went away. And they haven't been back since. That's been probably three months. So I don't know if that has to do with the tooth now, because I still haven't addressed my collar up, you know. Yeah, so uh, the infection. The, and I can still feel that. I'd go to the dentist, you know, and they're like, uh, you know, oh, yeah, that infection will go away. We'll give you something for the pain. It's like, I'm not here for that. I don't, you know, but they, they just tell me, you know, the infection will go away on its own or, you know, maybe some antibiotics. Did. So like no, after never, 10 years, it never, I can feel it right now. If I, yeah. if there's no teeth there, but if I push right here, it's tender. So wait, you know, so no. you were telling me that you had a bad tooth. It was infected. So they pulled the tooth, never treated the infection, or if they did, yeah. it was an antibiotic, but not ozone. Then no. the next tooth, like two years later, right next to they it, had to yeah. get pulled, never treated the infection correctly. And then the next tooth, three teeth pulled in yeah. the same location. Yeah, and the dentist never fixed the infection, so it's the same organism eating away at your jawbone, at your teeth, 
Okay. And uh, uh, my next my next tooth has already been repaired. So it's like pretty soon you'd be cutting into my smile. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's basically it's like an accumulation of infections. So including it in the jaw and then like on the surface, like the thing on the nose you're talking about, the cyst on the butt, and then intestinal parasites causing random pain in the gut, you know, on the mm -hmm. ribs. And then the heart, and so like, where's the heart disease, right? It's not, it's not even that. I don't believe you know? it is. But you can get these wild heart symptoms that are really scary. And the iPhone, yeah. your your watch wants you to call 911. Yeah. Like, but it's not the heart. It's not that. There's other things going on. And I went through this myself with the mold and, and stuff where I have, I take too much of a certain supplement to get the mold out. And the, and the pain reappears, you know, my blood pressure goes up a little bit. So then I have to cut back on the supplement. So then I push it, right. I'm trying to get the mold out fast and I'm, you know, I'm like, you know, 90 plus percent better, but it's work, you know, so it's yeah. not just heart disease. It's not LDL cholesterol. And there's just a lot to learn throughout the whole, you know, cause I never really had too many health concerns. Uh, being in my field, it wasn't something, you know, you don't yeah. know the way that I ate, you know, my whole life too, you know, so it, with me, it wasn't just, you know, here, take this. There's no supplement that you could give me if I was going to eat, you know, so I had to learn how to eat. I had to unlearn. Then I had to learn how to eat then, you know, and, and, and it's not even just that it's from the way that I ate my sugar intake and then most of the rest of the food turned to sugar and I wasn't even aware of that so when you try to just say oh, okay well I'm going to just eat meat now and do a keto thing your body's like no you're not you know I mean I struggled I mean I, I I'm just now getting to the point and I've been I've been working on my diet you know highs and lows and you know, at first I felt so awful. I remember the first time it started to feel good. You know, I was like, oh, I'm better. You know, let's, you know, give me some cheeseburgers and some bread and some this and that. And the next thing you know, it's like, oh, oh. Yeah, I had to learn that. <laughs> so, um, and I'm just now to a year, you know, like you said, uh, over a year to where I can cut out sugar without actually just my body making me feel like I'm, you know, it's the end of time. You got to you know, you got to go for that or, and, you know, Did you say you that your diet's pretty carnivore then. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah what I've percent been of your food intake is meat in meat. between eggs and meat. I would say probably 60% of what I eat. Okay. Good. Cause I've, I've, I've recently got into doing the raw eggs because I've heard about, you know, the different benefits, you know, the only, the only caution that I could hear is a salmonella and it's like, well, I have the same odds of buying, you know, if I buy a bag of dull lettuce or some apple juice, which I don't drink apple juice, but, um, but I still like my potatoes. <laughs> it's, it's like, <laughs> I've been better at eating salads, but I mean, I couldn't just eat meat, eggs and a salad in a day without feeling all shaky. And, you know, now it's like, yeah, I, you know, I, but I mean, all my life too, if I didn't eat every three, four hours, I was, you know, world's coming to an end. I'm hangry on this. And now, I mean, I don't, I could just not eat for 24 hours. And it's like, now I'll get hungry for like 10 minutes. I wait and it's gone. So I've, I've dealt, I've delved into fasting as well. And it got to the point where it's like, I I'm losing too much weight. I have to, I'm not eating cause I have to, I'm starving or anything. I just, I'm down to 118 because I'm a little guy, you know, but then when I get down to around 120 pounds, it's like, all right, Jack, we got to get some potatoes in here and <laughs> start eating more. So, so I feel like, you know, I, I'm a lot healthier in that range too, or I just don't need to eat, you know, like around my birthday, I had my birthday cake and my this and my that, and, you know, I, I ate like crap for a couple of days and yeah, oh yeah, I woke up the next day and it's like in the morning, it's like, oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> I know better. I from February 9th of 2023 till now, a year and a few months later, how much better are you on a scale of zero to hundred percent? Zero to hundred percent. Honestly, I mean, I, I, I don't have any limitations at currently, like nothing that I worry about health wise. I can, 
run, jog, swim, lift weights. Uh, so, I mean, I, I consider myself to be pretty healthy. I mean, especially for my age and, you know, I mean, not compared to other people, but for what I, you know, for what I've been through, I've only been trying to improve my health for a year. I feel now I couldn't get really much better. So, I mean, okay. Uh, you know, I, okay. So I'll give myself a 90, you know, right now. And I'd yeah. say you met me at about a 25. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't feel I was in very good shape when, when we met. Yeah. I couldn't just wake up and, you know, go to work. I'm going to go do this today. And I remember helping the guy across the street with a little bit of work. And I remember coming home and saying, yeah, Karen, I went and did it. And I, you know, I, I you know, I didn't have any problems. I'm thinking, man, I, yeah. It was like a success for you to have helped the, the neighbor or whatever. Yeah. Whereas before that you were concerned if you could even do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of felt that way too. When I had a lot of mold, like I didn't want to drive. I was afraid something bad would happen. I might, you know, have a heart attack or something, crash the car. And then, you know, and that, that was 2016. And I have um, some flower beds and I bought some, uh, like, like a, two yards of uh, mulch. And I used a shovel and a wheelbarrow and I moved, you know, laid the mulch down. And I did some one night and then a couple of days later, I did some more. And it was kind of an effort. And then two years later, I did the same thing, but I got double the mulch. I did it all in one night. And I was like feeling good about it, right? Whereas like the first time I did, I was like, oh my gosh, I accomplished this thing. But you know, I grew up on a farm. I'm used to like that kind of a labor. Yeah. Know, a full day of yeah. labor every day for yeah. the whole summer. Yeah. And, and when you feel so sick, it's like, you know, it's like hard to stand up. You know, it's hard to use a shovel. So, yeah. Man, it's it's rough. So I remember, not not this past birthday because my birthday's in April. One of the pictures that I'll that, I, that I'll show you, one of the parasites. I had my heart set up. It was going to be my forty eighth birthday, you know, and I was getting I was getting better. I was having my ups and downs, and uh, I was back. I was in the gym and and uh, I was working through an injury and I was getting stronger, and I was going to go. I wanted to go on my birthday and go to the gym and break all my, you know, at my, at that time, personal records, which were no records, you know, cause like I said, I'm coming off injury. So I mean, Hey honey, I'm doing 40 pounds. on the. <laughs> um, so yeah, everything was said. I woke up on my birthday and I just, I felt like garbage. I was like, oh, I didn't even make it to the gym and I passed a parasite. <laughs> it, was, it was on my birthday. <laughs> was like, so I was like, like, well, I'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> so, so. Yeah, I was talking with somebody, a patient yesterday, and he's got IBS, so like chronic diarrhea, and it's been many years. And he's getting better, and he's getting some parasites out. But he said to me yesterday, like, I've been really tired. My sleep's not good. I said, when did that start? He goes, that's been about a month now. I said, well, that's when he started para one and para two. So parasites are more active at night and you're taking these supplements right before bed so they're affecting your sleep and yeah. he goes he goes I'm, ch I'm doing everything i can to relax and repair and sleep really well and he went to see some other holistic doctor who said getting these parasites out and recovering is work and he's trying to not do any work and i was like yeah mm -mm, it's not that way yeah like don't you know, don't start training for a marathon. He's a, so a soccer coach, right? So, but don't start running and stuff. Like your work is at night, you know? Like that's when your body's resting, repairing. And the idea is um, you wake up feeling more refreshed, but it's going to be a few, a little while before he starts to feel that. He's on his way. His digestion's getting better. Yeah, mine's, uh, my digestion was never really a problem, but it has improved, you know, I mean, there's been ups and downs, but I mean, there's, there's been ups and downs, you know, with, with all of it, with between just like getting better. I sit and, you know, I, I think about these things and I always try to come up with a common denominator, you know, cause one day I'd feel great. And like, I'm 25 years old and the next day is like, I didn't change anything. I do didn't you know, same supplements. I ate the same. I slept good last night, but I woke up and I just feel so awful. But I figure I probably just either through parasites or some kind of toxins, just I, I would, I end up 
calling it to myself, calling it a toxin dump. I just, I probably dump something off yeah. in my body and it's, I, I'm overwhelmed and it's just, buddy, you're sitting, you're staying in for the day. But I haven't had that, you know, again, not on wood, but I haven't had, it's been, long, I mean, quite, a, I don't worry about it. I wake up and I swing my feet off the bed and, you know, I'm not sore anymore. Besides my knee and my actual couple injuries that I've sustained, I don't, you know, you wouldn't even know I was in the trades. I feel. I was looking at through your file. And I found um, parasites initially. Yeah. And then basically you need to support as your body is getting cleaned out. So lymphatic system. Yeah. Her kidney. Then I found mm -hmm. fungus. Then you needed, mm -hmm. needed more support for the colon and then support for your, um, your back and your hip. So that's kind of how a lot of these programs go is like we find the toxin or the organisms. Yeah. And we just start cleaning. And then what organs need help while you're cleaning? So like the lymphatic system is what caused the initial body odor. Yeah. You know, and the, the colon dysfunction was caused, causing the pains here in the gut. So, yeah. So, so there are moments when, and it, there could be related to stress, whether bad food or too much dumping all at once, where your body's like overwhelmed and you feel like crap that day. Yeah. Next day you feel so much better. So it is kind of a roller coaster. I try to mitigate that as much as possible, but that's, you know, when people go through it, they know that they're on the right track. So it's not just uh start at the bottom and we just climb up to the top and it just gets better every day. Yeah. I mean, you get, you know, I've gotten better over time, but it's, you know, it's like up three steps down one, up three, yeah. up two steps down one, you know, I mean, but, I'll take it, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the way I look at, you know, I didn't really, I didn't really look out for myself all that well for years. So, I mean, at any time, you know, any, how I feel now, I feel is like kind of, I'm lucky. So, you know, I'll never look for a hundred percent. So I'm, I'm, I feel happy to, you know, feel as good as I do now because I still haven't forgotten just how awful it was. I just couldn't leave the house. I wouldn't have, you know, I, I, I just couldn't see it of getting much better. <laughs> you know, just yeah. without. Right. So now you're on Carboxy. That's my favorite detox product. So you, you've been on that for how long? Uh, for quite a while. I take it. I don't take it every day. I take it three, four times a week. Yeah. For um, eight months, right? Yeah. Six months, maybe. Yep, yep. When you first started taking that, did you have some kind of, you know, reaction that you knew it was working? Not really. I took it, uh, if, you know, if my memory serves me correct, um, uh, cause I, I was waiting for this big, exp you know, uh, you know, I uh, know. I remember, life, I remember no, you, 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 you went a week with no negative reaction, like a big detox reaction or something. Yeah. And then so I was like, yeah. a week into it, you went to the bathroom, you told me and what came out smelled like a dead animal, which was my experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it took a week for that to happen. Yeah. About a week. It was, yeah. and you could tell because it was, you know, it was different. Yeah. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I take it a couple times a week. You know, if I, if I don't take it for a month and then, you know, or as opposed to if I take it, you know, a time or two a week, there's a difference. It's working. Yeah. It's doing something. Yeah. I was at a conference this past weekend for CellCore. And one of the speakers said, uh, the new multivitamin is a binder because we live in such a toxic world. So it's yeah. time to take vitamin A, B, C, D, E, take a binder so you get all those toxins out. Then the nutrients that are already in your body, they work. Toxins cause uh, nutrients to be stuck and then you become deficient, right? Quote, unquote, deficient. But yeah. it's all there. It just needs to be um, available to be used. And the, is, that's what the toxins do. They prevent nutrients to be available. So Makes yeah, sense. binders, a binder every day for everybody, basically. Yeah. 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 I have biotoxin binder, I believe. And yeah. And carboxy. Those two, I know I've, uh, you know, off the top of my head, yeah. I believe I'm just on the carboxy now. And I'm not sure if I'm currently on one. But I've went through bottles of biotoxin. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever end up going back to any of, their, uh, of your medical doctors that were concerned about your heart? I haven't been back. I went and got a uh, a checkup because most of my life I didn't have 
uh, health insurance. You know, it doesn't come with my job and not uh, pretty expensive out of pocket. So uh, when I finally got it, then they started saying, hey, you got to come in and get a checkup. And I've always been kind of, you know, I don't want to know what's wrong. I, I, I felt more comfortable going to you and saying, hey, look, I have this, I have that, this, that, and the other. With the Because we fix it. I have nothing against, you know, their side. I don't, I don't believe, I think we need all of it. You know, is right. my, my personal deal, but I really, I didn't want to go and tell him, hey, look, I think it's this, I think it's that, because it's going to be statins and Lipitor and Eliquis and this and stents and da, 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 and it's how they know how to deal with it. Right. Um, metformin and metropolol and, you know, and I was a candidate for all that. I'm sure from what they, I'm sure they could have found some equation where I would have needed so, and you know, honestly, if, if I had kept eating the way I did and smoking and this and doing that and whatever, that probably would have been the way it would have been the best thing for me, you know, but being that I was willing, you know, lucky enough to come across this information and willing enough to try to make changes that kind of work, but they don't really know. So they, they don't, you know, a lot more about me than any doctor out there. They know. Yeah, it's, it's more about so I went in, I went in and, I, and I got my blood work done and I showed you, I showed you most of that yeah. uh, at, at one point. Yeah. But besides that, I haven't gone back because I certainly don't go and say, Oh, my, you know, my holistic doctor says this, that, cause they don't want to hear that. Right. I, mean, you tell I looked after, I looked doctor, after yeah. my uncle. And he had a, he had, a, uh, he went to a kinesiologist who was very similar to, you know, he's in your field. He's kind of what you do. The way, the way uncle was, is he was like, well, my guy says not to do this. Oh, you're chiropractor. And they, they basically fought each other through him, <laughs> you know, and then I, I was quote unquote his handler. So when we'd go to his cardiologist, she'd give it to me about all oh, that he's listening to him. And then. He'd pull me aside and say, you, gotta, you can't keep dating. <laughs> so, so, you know, if I break my arm or if I have a heart attack, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll make me, but bar yeah. man. Um, they'll get your heart started again. You know, I had a patient a long time ago. He was late stage heart disease. And uh, he said he went to the hospital many times. And one time he brought a suitcase of medications and they're like prescribing the, the, the next medication. And he opened up the suitcase. It was filled with all these bottles. He's like, I can guess just as well as you can guess. So even though the diagnosis is there, like the top notch uh, scans and the blood tests and all that stuff is fantastic. There's the underlying principles, you know, that cause disease. And that's the organisms and the toxins. So when people, some you know, sometimes I have a new patient and they're afraid to tell me, all their symptoms because they're thinking allopathically like you go to the hospital and you say i got this condition they give you a diagnosis and it's on your record and it never gets cured it you have for the rest of your life and so it's scary and like because the drugs don't get to the underlying problem whereas i'm like no tell me everything so that way <laughs> i know it all we can fix it you know like if you need some yeah. drugs use drugs but let's clean your body out yeah, I just when I did when I did see him, you know, I I you know I I told him, you know, well, I'm do I've been doing healthier things. Yeah, you know, I've been exercising more. I've been eating more. I taking vitamins, but I even you mentioned supplements, and they roll their eyes, you know, and you yeah, maybe rightfully so. Yeah, I guess, but you know, and 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 I don't want to. I'm not trying to pigeonhole their whole profession, or right. or, or certainly or any doctor that I've seen. How I even, you know got to learn about you know even even you was you know out of skepticism uh because i'm learning all this stuff to take care of my uncle on the, on the medical side with all these new all these medications and then he's got this guy and he's like pulling me aside and saying you know what that stuff does to him you you know, you know what happens if you take cholesterol out of the body you know and i'm thinking oh gee i, I thought i was a good guy i learned all this stuff and now you're telling me, so I'm thinking, are you just taking his, you know, taking advantage of him? And so I took a picture of one of his supplements so I could come home and go on YouTube. I went on YouTube and I think it was Cataplex B. And I 
typed in Cataplex B and started scrolling through and I, oh, there's a guy talking about it. And it was you talk. And I'm like, oh, and you explained it comprehensively. And I'm thinking, okay, well, what about this? Oh, he's on this one too. And, and it really, he wasn't explaining it in the way to, I was more like, oh, but then, like I says, I, I was up that first night I found you, I was up to like three 30 in the morning, just going, wow. I get it. I get where he's coming from there. Now, now, if he's right, you know, who's right or who's wrong, but at least I know where you're coming from. It's not just, oh, eat this, eat this root seed, eat this, <laughs> right. you know. And then I, I ran into a friend of mine that was sick with cancer, and I started talking to him about sugar, and he's like, oh, sugar is cancer, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I told him, I says, yeah, and, and you know him, I mean, because – yeah, I, I told him, I says, yeah, I saw these videos of this, you know, this doctor. And he's just like, what's his name? I want to watch the videos. <laughs> and then the next time I, next time I saw him, he's like, oh yeah, I went there. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're a patient there. It's like, wow. <laughs> and then I interviewed him. He's on a YouTube video. He was the guy that had intestinal cancer. He started fasting. Yeah. He really helped him out. I hadn't seen him in like five years. I thought he was dead. And then he shows up in my office. He's seeing one of my other practitioners. And I saw him in the hallway. I was like, hugs, you know, like, yeah, you're alive. You know, I didn't say that, but I was like, oh my God, he's alive. He's still alive. Yeah. yeah. Personally, with our dietary thing, with our pyramid, I, I remember quite vividly early in, in school when they toted that bad boy out and says, you need to this. And I knew then it's like, I can't eat like that. I, I couldn't eat this much of that and that much of this and go up to the top, but that didn't, that train of thought didn't lead me to eating right because I was still scared to eat meat. I was scared to eat too many eggs. Well, the bottom I knew that was, I knew that was a, a line of, you know, it's. Yeah. So the bottom of the pyramid, eight to 11 servings of grain. It's like, how do you even do that? I, and I had a guy, he was a mechanic. And he was eating 10 to 12 loaves of bread per week. And he had multiple surgeries, both of his shoulders, hips, knees. He was in the hospital. He was in there so often, he married the charge nurse of the surgical floor. <laughs> like, And it was his lifestyle. And I told him, and he, he blamed, he's pushing cars around and doing mechanical stuff. And that's what he blamed his joints, um, you know, falling apart on. And I was like, no, it's the bread. And one day yeah. he came back to see me as a, you know, for a regular visit. And he goes, he, he made a decision. I can never see my life without bread. I was trying to get him off bread. Yeah. And last time I saw him. So probably since then, he's maybe, maybe he's had five more surgeries, you know? <laughs> That's one thing that I was, cause I ate a lot of bread. Um, and, uh, that's that was probably the easiest thing to just up and stop. I would eat, you know, hamburger, you know, a box of hamburger helper and half a loaf of bread for dinner. You know what I'm saying? That was part of my, you know, I'm a tradesman, you know, I'm eating, I'm eating like a king tonight. You know? So, I mean, yeah, I ate a lot of bread, a lot of buns, a lot of hamburger, a lot of fast food. I haven't had a loaf of, a, a loaf of bread's worth of bread since we've met. You know, now, I mean, if I, if I eat, you know, uh, meat and eggs and if i eat like that i can eat way less food and i don't need to fill out if i eat garbage all day then at the end of the night you know i still have to fill out my caloric needs and that's how i'll fill it out with junk food or bread or whatever but if i have the eaten, protein needs so like if i've eaten good food then i don't i don't have them cravings to you know then it's just a matter of saying yeah i don't i'm not gonna eat no chocolate it's not like oh i gotta have something uh you know it's now it's just more like it's my birthday i'm having chocolate cake and ice cream <laughs> thanksgiving <laughs> at the end of the night when you're still hungry it's because there wasn't enough protein like grams of protein That's yeah what's missing yeah yeah real food when i see videos and and i watch people that just are able to just change their diet you know oh, i only eat this and i only eat i admire those people because i that's a lot of my struggle was changing the diet. I'm learning, you know, I was scared to eat what is actually good for you, to, you know, but I would eat all that garbage hostess. <laughs> so, you know, I had to, 
and I, I think if I could have just changed the diet in a day, I probably, I'd be here six months ago, you know, or maybe not, but, uh, so with, you know, I, I do, I, I do believe, you know, it's that it's the diet. I mean, the supplements as well, but I don't think you're going to get the benefits without, you know, getting rid right. of the sugar. Enough. But you had the unlucky exposures to the other parasites. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, even just one of the other, and I don't know if it's parasite, but right after I started with the pair of three, only one nostril worked my whole life. I figured that that's why you had two. I could always breathe, but it was always just one. And if I ever, if I ever blew my nose, tried to blow my nose, it would just, and now both, it, and I couldn't, so I, I could never blow my nose well. Um, always, little childhood, my uncle used to laugh at me. Oh, Bubbles, you can't blow your nose with a stick of dynamite. So, uh, shortly in, and then I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll just leave with this, but shortly on after the, on the pair of three, my nose, I just felt like it drained in the back of my throat and like I sucked it out, like how you suck snot out and you blow it and you, you know, but it was like a chunk and I spit it in the sink and it right down the drain, but I noticed it was like both of them is like my my sinuses were clear and they're still now it's been what 13 14 months and i can hurt like the garbage guy i can do whatever and i breathe through both nostrils and have ever since that day now i don't know if that was a parasite or a parasite. but that happened and i mean yeah. we're talking 40 plus years of and now it's been i so yeah, I mean, I, I'm convinced. <laughs> you, know, you can't. You can't even tell me. Did you, so I, hope this, I hope that someone maybe you know could say, "Wow," because I bring it up to people. You know, I'm not shy about it. People I know, but no one wants to. You know, people are like, "Oh, I don't. I don't want to see that." I'm like, I'd rather not have it in me. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna end off here, and I want to thank you for being a part of this video and educating everybody on youtube yeah thanks thanks, thanks for having me and yeah, you're uh, welcome. again thanks for everything that you do okay yep you're welcome